We are halfway there. The first two games of the early slate completed. Now we have two more games in the late slate. Landon beginning with the hosts. The University of Indianapolis Greyhounds, the number one seed in this region, taking on the eight-seeded William Jewell Cardinals, two GLVC schools facing off for the fourth time this season. That's insane. It's insane to think about. I mean, you just got through with them in the GLBC championship game, or the, excuse me, the quarterfinal games. You battled through all the regular season, and yet you find yourself here once again in the time that matters most on a road to Evansville. The Greyhounds lost by two at Jewel, won by two here on this floor earlier this year, just about a month and a half ago, and then lost by four in overtime a week ago today at Lindenwood in the GLBC semifinals. So the Greyhounds looking to even that tally today at two apiece. But, Landon, how can they do that? And, you know, it's just one of those things that William Jewell is such an explosive team, and a lot of that has to do with a key core of their players, which we'll get into in here just a little bit, though. But once William Jewell gets hot, they get red hot, and they do not slow down for anybody. And UND just has to keep up with that momentum as best as possible because we saw that last weekend at Lindenwood. William Jewell was just red hot. UND got, was able to close it back in and send it to overtime, but it was still a loss. You mentioned those key players. You look at the five players they have on the floor almost the entirety of the game. I mean, they play it, the same five is, players almost the entire it is, game. It is a very rare thing if William Jewell brings in subs, and the subs they're usually don't score. They're bringing a few, maybe for five or so but they don't, they don't score a whole lot. And you look at players like McKinley. Kobe McKinley, tw uh, uh, 17 points on the season, hit the game-tying three, descended to OT last week, missed a game-winning three here on this floor a month and a half ago. And you see Jordan Germain, 17.4 a game. Both of those guys were first team all GLVC players this season. And one of them, McKinley, was all defensive team. Those are your two main guys, McKinley and Jermaine. How can UND contain them today? Well, I mean, you've been, they've been watching this. They have so much film and replay they can go back and look at. Just try to do what they can and just shut him down. you got to shut him down early on. But at the same time, you can't allow the other players like Trey Shannon and Eli Winger to get red hot as well. And the Greyhounds looking to even the tally at two apiece, but we're gonna go ahead and go down to our sound reporter for the first time today, and Addison Mosley. Addison, what do you have for us? Is there a mic now? Thank you, Addison. Continue the pregame show here. You look over the Greyhounds five. They're going to go with the same five they always like to go with. You look at the two main guys in Choa and Bingham. What do they need to do today offensively? I mean, like I, like I was kind of saying a little bit ago, you got to shut down those bigs. And being Isaac Patterson, you know, Cody McKinley, George Jermaine, you guys got to shut those down first. But you, Indy, they are a big defensive heavy team. They're the number one team in the defense in the GLVC looking over at William Jewell. I mean, they're number four ranked defensive team. On, you, on paper though, it looks like uni has got this all figured out. Should be an easy win, wrong. Jewell has had their number just the past few games. And, you know, we've already seen two other games here today. They've both been upsets. Mar this is March, anything can happen. It is March and we'll be right back with starting lineups. That's up next. You're watching the 2024 Division II NCAA Midwest Regional NCAA.com. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. 
go ahead and go down to the floor and check out the starting lineups for both squads. There was your starting five announced. William Duell going with Trey Shan and Isaac Patterson. McKinley in Jermaine the, in the backcourt and the front court. Eli Winger, that forward, has that shoulder taped up after the injury against the Greyhounds last week, a week ago, in that four-point overtime win where Bingham dropped 33 points against William Jewell. He's in the five for the Greyhounds alongside Kendrick Cho with the center, Tynes, Bingham, Walker, and Ejaw. That's the five for the Greyhounds, who are in the gray, putting the gray in Greyhounds today. William Joy in the black outfit. And for the fourth time this season, Cardinals, Greyhounds, here we go. Can the Greyhounds finally figure out these Cardinals? They lose the tip, and it's controlled by Jordan Germain and the William Jewel Cardinals. Here we go, Cardinals, Greyhounds, round four. Just a week ago today, these Cardinals got the four-point win in overtime in Missouri in the GLBCC semifinals, and they went on to win the GLBCC tournament and clinched the automatic bid after beating Lewis in the final. Step back, Jay is no good by Jermaine over Choa. And up to Walker, open for look at the wing. Jarvis Walker gets a start with a three ball. The man from Muskegon getting us started for you, Andy. Uh, great start for Jarvis Walker. I mean. The last four games you looked at before the GLBC tournament, he averaged nearly 22 points a game. Jarvis Walker has been on a different planet these last few games, and he's looking to continue that here today. And no one tracked him there, and that time Ejar was tracking, but Trey Shannon gets the tough bucket in the lane. Shannon had a lot of traffic to work through on that one. Having David Ejar right next to you, and David Ejar being one of those big players here, trying to muscle your way. David Ejar down low for Kendrick Choa, got tapped off and stolen. William Joy on the court, McKinley trailing. Here he goes up into the air, no buckets, but a foul, a late foul gonna be called on the floor on the Greyhounds. It'd be a push on Kendrick Choa. You can't afford to get him in foul trouble early. Yeah, 
because if you get Kendrick out this early with foul trouble, I mean, yeah, yes, it's only one, but Kendrick's got, just got to be a little bit careful. Open look, no Open one around. Open look, Isaac Patterson. William Jewell right back on top. Their first lead of the, of the contest. Greyhound had struggled offensively last week. William Jewell seemed to know their entire playbook at times. But this time, working through an offense to Greyhound. Stoa down low, the bucket, tough one. As he had the matchup difference on Trey Shannon. Up 5-4 on the Greyhound. Back and forth we go. Kid this is chill. how all three games have been. This is back and forth. See song. And that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of, of March Madness, having these games that have been back and forth. Almost steal. Choa read it, but Winger held him off. Now Winger has a lane to the bucket, and he'll go that way, and Ejaw can test. But a foul is going to be called on David Ejaw. That'll send Eli Winger to the line. And Eli Winger, he really, I mean, wasn't really a household name all season long. Started two games in the regular season, and started all three conference tournament games, and really broke out in the GOV tournament. Had career highs of 10 points and 15 points, and then 16 in the final along with 13 boards, a career high in the quarterfinal win over Truman, as all of his career highs came from last weekend. You know, that's the thing with Eli Winger, though. You're able to do this, and you're able to make a name and a case for yourself. It's, of course, is going to elevate you into the starting lineup. Yes, he only averages seven seven games a game. Seven, seven games a game. A game. And a jump ball is going to be caused by the way, by the way of the Greyhounds. Winger's first was good, second was too strong. The Greyhounds force a tie up, and that'll be you any possession. We saw these two teams play on this floor on February 22nd, so just about a month ago. Uh, less than a month ago, they played here, and then uh, less than a week ago, they played again. And I'll tell you this, as Bingham goes up. Bingham missed the shot. That was what he was hitting all last week. Two on one, pass inside. Shannon couldn't handle it. Not the back things out to Patterson. Here he is once again. He'll drive. McKinley. Pump picking on Ija. He'll drive inside. Good contest from Walker, but it's a tough bucket from McKinley. Like I was saying, though, the William Jewell crowd is very stout. But the last time they played here at home, all the UND students packed up in here. It was a loud house. That is for day, sure. Of course, they're all trying to recruit UND students here. As another guy, another bucket from Jarvis Walker. Scoop shot from Jarvis Walker. Five for him in the early going. The scoop off the window. 7-7 so seven, seven early. This is how these two teams play each other. It's going to be close the entire way out. You can imagine backdoor cut. Patterson made the cut and stopped. And the pass went out of play. Turnover for William Jewell, the first by their squad on turnovers. And three steps to the Greyhounds. Their line change, usual line change, as they bring in Julian Stein, fellow seven foot German, Sean and Craig, and Zach Zuhl. That line change the Greyhounds love to make. Head coach Paul Corsaro in his fourth year as head coach, 78 and 36 record with this squad. Second straight year, these Greyhounds have hosted this regional. Sean Craig up top, now Bingham right side. Bingham hasn't scored yet, misses last shot. He'll drive inside. Pump, jump stop, Steinfeld gets a bucket. Good stuff here early on from Julian. We're going to get another good look at this. It was a good dish, too, as Bingham drove inside, saw the, the tallest line on the floor sitting open, and a good finish by Steinfeld. McKinley being harassed by Bingham. Now Shannon guarded by Tynes. He'll flip it over to Joe Zhang for a three ball look. That one no good. And the foul's going to be called on the floor once again on Zach Zool as he held the shirt of Jermaine. The third team foul on the Greyhounds already. That's the one thing you can't do for the Greyhounds. William Jewell, probably the best three point shooting team in the GLVC this season. And that's really the reason that William Jewell took him out last weekend was that three point shooting. William Jewell, they won't miss open looks very often. That is, that is very true. You know, Jason, we were talking about this. Uh, and the intermission between the first and second games. William Jewell's a team that lives and dies by the three. Here's McKinley. Double team now with Sutton. He lost it. Sean Craig gets the steal. Going onto the floor. He has that one. There's Bingham. Still, and he gets it up to Bingham somehow, some way. Was on the floor for quite some time. Now the ball in the hands of Zach. So right by McKinley. McKinley gets the steal on the other end now. Eye for an eye. And he'll pull it up from long range. Kobe McKinley, no rebound. Joe Zhang, offensive rebound. William Jewell still trailing by two. Shannon drives. Zool guarding. Good defense. Bucket, no good. Time ball rebound, and he got stripped away by Shannon. And the foul was called on William Jewell. A tough call for sure on the Cardinals there. And the crowd well, is the not William Jewell faithful. Are not like a not one. 
9-7 early. The under-16 media timeout. This game already high intensity as we expected. It's 9-7 Greyhounds. You're watching the 2024 Division II men, Men's Division II Regional on NCAA.com. I pledge, I, pledge, I pledge, I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. These two teams duking it out for a fourth time this season, Landon. You know, what's it like playing a team this much in a season? Well, I mean, considering that this is the fourth time, I mean, you gotta, you probably gotta think for you, Indy, you gotta be sick and tired of playing them, you know? Oh, I'll say this. Paul Cochero, he was on Query and Company the other day on 107.5 The Fan. He, he was being interviewed and he says he gets up at around 3.30 or 4 every morning to study film and watch this. And now this, like we said, this is the fourth time playing this. You think he's got to have them pretty much read like a book, but William Jewell does a pretty good job of that as well. Walker out of the timeout, looking to go right in the body. Jermaine, and once again, another turnover for the Greyhounds, stolen by Jermaine. Down the lane he goes, left inside to Shandon. Miscontrolled up top for Zhang. The Greyhounds so far so good in the terms of transition defense. And Shannon will drive and kick over to Jermaine. Baseline uses, he's trying to use that. As he backs down, Zach Soul to the right. Seinfeld now guarding as well. Up top for McKinley with 10 to shoot. Over left for Sutton. Driving on Walker. Pull up floater, no good. Rebound, Steinfeld. Good corral there by Steinfeld. Able to not keep the out of bounds. Keep it in the hands of Bingham. Bingham hasn't scored yet. He had 33 in the last game against the Cardinals a week ago. Up top is Steinfeld. Now Zach Zool. Screen right from Steinfeld. Sean Craig now. Walker left side. He'll drive right. And he has the lane. He has the bucket as well. Jarvis Walker, seven points so far. Able to get that open lane. And that's a big help, too, from Julian Steinfeld. Able to, able to get a good pick and set there. Jarvis making a clear pathway. 11-7 early the Greyhounds. McKinley with it, hit that game-tying three to, to send it to overtime a week ago. Screen left from Zhang. Jermaine on it. Zhang missed one earlier. This time, another miss. And the rebound, Seinfeld is already his third or fourth board of this one. And Zach Zoll controls for UND. Up to Walker. Screen left, John Craig. Walker dancing down low, Steinfeld, corner, Zool, three ball, short, rebound, Sean Craig tied up, jump ball will go the way of William Jewell. Here comes two more subs for the Greyhounds, that Diamond Ingram for the first time and Josiah Tynes. And then for William Jewell, Isaac Patterson checks in. For William Jewell, those two subs, Zhang and Sutton, are gonna be probably the only two subs that we might see all day, except for maybe Kanye. Kanyukaya, Gutsa, or Scarborough once or twice, but those are the only two that you might see. Greyhounds press, broken down easily as they go to Shannon. Into the corner, Wingert, back to Patterson. Driving left hand, dishing it over in the corner once again. Greyhounds so far defensively sound. Double team on Wingert. Flip it over, cross court pass, Patterson. A very good shooter, he missed the open look, and Walker, one handed rebound. Times. Walker in the corner, open was Ingram, but McKinley was able to recover in time. Screen left for Ingram for Walker. Back to Ingram again, this time he pulls the three-point jumper, that one no good, rebound Patterson. He'll drive, McKinley, splits two, blocked by Steinfeld. Walker down the lane, he goes, one hand, no good. Steinfeld, second chance, no. Foul's gonna be called on the Greyhounds, it will go the other way. That'll go 
on Julian Steinfeld trying to come in from behind to get that rebound. Julian almost had the perfect chance to slam it home. It's already the fourth team foul on the Greyhounds. It's 11 to seven early. William Jewell is one of the worst rebounding teams in the conference this season, 13th in that category. UND was second in that category. And that's something that, co that Coach Paul Corsaro preaches on. He loves to win the rebound and the turnover battle right now. As we're looking at it right now, UND leading the rebound about eight to five turnovers. Up top, 32. long three, Jermaine knocks it down. That's what William Jewell has in their bag. Every one of the players on the court has the, ca the capability to shoot a three from anywhere on the floor. Ingram throws it away, looking for Jarvis Walker on a roll. And Edal check in for Ingram, and Bingham will come back in as well. Greyhounds have already committed now three, no, now four turnovers in this game. That's what William Jewell specializes in, is the turnover battle. The number two in the conference and the turnover ratio this season. Rounds were seventh in that category. Sutton over to Patterson, the left wing. Half of the fifth shot clock, it's stolen by Choa. Choa on the floor, goes out of bounds, but Choa, I suppose he's done best these last six or seven games reading passes. He's able to read passes extremely well, and then also, I mean, if you get a chance for a block, Kendrick will, will almost bully you into making him take the ball back to you. Jordan Germain corrals in the inbound. 10 to shoot still. Pull up, mid-range, jumper, good. Jordan Germain's killing it now. William Jewell back on top by a point. David Eja. Walker, Tynes left side. Up top for Bingham. Now Walker on the right. Joel left, screen. Walker back to the right side, thought about it, split two defenders into the corner, stolen away once again. But Walker gets it back, dishes it over to Eja, who slams it home, and won the hoop in the horn for David Eja. Where did Eja come from? Able to get the second chance points. Unreal. And that'll bring us to our under 12 media timeout. I mean, look, they're, they're just playing a game of hot potato. Jarvis almost lost it. Eja able to finish. So when we come back, we'll go for a free throw for David Eja. You're watching 2024 Division II. Midwest Regional, NCAA.com. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally, and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. Thank you, Addison. Out of the timeout, David Eja will shoot a free throw. It was an and one for David Eja off the slam. So one shot for him. He's an 81% shooter at the line this season. And the free throw, good. Yeah, UND David, back up by two. Yeah, with Eja, he's arguably the best free throw shooter on this UND squad here. And that could come in, come in very handy here if it comes to, you know, get in the close game scenarios. Patterson, Shannon up top. Guarded closely by David Eja. Now Jordan Germain has the last five points for the Cardinals. Guarded by Sean Craig, stepping back. 
Dishing over McKinley, thought about a straightaway three. And stolen by Walker, right by Walker. It's Walker and absolutely nobody as he lays it home. I mean, he was the lone man in no man's land right there. Textbook stuff, Jarvis Walker. Greyhounds lead by four, 11 minutes to go here in the first period. Choa guarding Wingert, Wingert tightly, Wingert. What a move here from Shannon into the corner, Patterson. Greyhounds recovered defensively. And almost get a steal, but Jermaine has it. Choa guarding, baseline being used. Into the corner, Shannon, open, three ball, no. Ejaw the rebound, William Jewell not necessarily hitting their threes today, and now one for six. Ejaw, he's one you gotta look out for on the rebound battle. Right to 13th overall in the GLVC. Bingham the floater, soft touch off the hand. Greyhounds lead by six. But you gotta be careful, because William Jewell, they've had their looks from three, just not hitting them yet. If the Cardinals get going from three, they are really hard to beat. And we've seen just look, we've seen what Jordan Germain can do from beyond the arc. So that's another thing you have to watch out for. Walker guarding Patterson. Patterson will use that right side up top for Winger. Back to Patterson. Rips through, dishes it up top. William Jewell looks uncomfortable offensively as they go over to McKinley with five to shoot. He has to pull one up. He will. You know he will. McKinley can do that. Step back, jumper on Sean Craig's head. Like I said, you know McKinley can do that, and he will do that. I mean, he took every bit of time off that clock, as you can imagine. Here's Darvis Walker, now Bingham up top. Down low for Choa. A foul is going to be called on Eli Wingert. Tugging at the hand of Choa, trying to, trying to prevent the post-entry pass. That's the third foul on William Jewell, and the Greyhounds pairing four substitutions. Dylan Ingram, Zach Zool, Julian Seinfeld, and Josiah Tynes all check in for the Greyhounds. Checking out is Sean Craig, David Eja, Kinnachoa, and Jesse Bingham. The one sub staying in is one Mr. Jarvis Walker. Zool will inbound, and they'll go to Walker in the corner. Thought about pulling one. They'll drive right behind his back. Step back in order to go with the ball. Cut from Tynes. Over to Steinfeld, off the glass, no good, gets his own board, and that right hand hook shot's good. Steinfeld, set his hands off his own miss. He's having a good game so far, Julian Steinfeld. Four points and four rebounds. Yeah, it's been a great day so far for Julian. I mean, you can expect to see that for the rest of this day. Wingert guarded by the seven-foot German. Steinfeld being harassed by him, put the ball on the ground, had to give it to Patterson. Greyhounds defensively playing great so far. Now here's Winger though, the backdoor cut. Blocked from behind by Julian Steinfeld, and, that, and Ingram throws it off Shannon. No way. What a play by the Greyhounds. That was a A plus. <laughs> smile was a great A smart move right there for Don Ingram to throw it off the back. But it was the entire day, it was the entire play. Steinfeld from behind, Ingram saves it off the back of William Jewell. That's the kind of place the, to get your team momentum. So much has happened in so little time. That was awesome. What a play here you see on the replay. It was a good cut for Wingert, but then Steinfeld, and then the play of Ingram. <laughs> Six-point Greyhounds lead, here's Bingham looking to extend that lead. Stepping back, driving, Bingham, jumper, short, rebound, tipped out by Steinfeld and into the hands of Ingram. The impact Steinfeld's having right now is insane. Here's his screen left for Tynes, back for Steinfeld. Now Zach Zuhl, 10 to shoot. Zach Zuhl will drive, left hand, five to shoot. Has to get one off, does so, and it drops. First points of the day for the Ohio Dominican transfer. He's been a spark plug on this team. William Jewell and Patterson now down by eight. The Greyhounds on a run. 13, it's 11 to two run for the Greyhounds right now. Defense chance, rain. Nickerson Hall right now as Shannon drives, kicks into the corner back for McKinley. Left wing, Hill drive, Steinfeld. What a move by McKinley. Seeing the flying hand from Steinfeld to go under the basket. Phenomenal job. There's that Corsaro stomp. As the Greyhounds lead by six. Zool crossover, pump faking. Back up top, Steins, a three ball, no. Steinfeld once again having an impact on the rebound but couldn't corral it as McKinley does. Patterson with it. Zach Zool almost stole that one away. But now McKinley has it controlled. Shannon, corner, Patterson, pump fake, baseline, layup. Back with him, back with him four again. The Cardinals are never out of a game. Not with the way they can light up the scoreboard. Zach Zool, 
Up top, Tynes. Corner, Ingram. Drives. Rips through. Layup good. And that's his first points of the day for the Maryville transfer. Greyhounds keeping their distance right now. Six and some change to go in this one. Patterson, corner, Shannon, three ball, cash. There's the three point look for William Jewell. That started off cold. I mean, now two for seven. We see what they can do before. Zach Zuhl, soft touch, no good, but the Steinfeld put back. How about the man? Seven foot German, Julian Steinfeld, the center. Six points, five rebounds, two blocks so far. And as, has Jul one of his best games of the year already. Julian, is, he's not known for his scoring, but just for his blocks and rebounds. He only has a season high of seven points this year. It's not a very Julian Steinfeld uh, scoring like tie, but Julian's on, on track to have himself a career day. McKinley up and under the basket he goes. He has the answer. William Jewell keeping pace with the Greyhounds right now. Both teams getting it going offensively. Zach Zuhl slows things down for UND. Ingram back for Steinfeld. Hand off for Bingham. Open mid-range jumper. No good. Too strong. Patterson thought about pulling one up. He gets it back now. Guarded by Zach Zuhl. Screen left. Patterson rips through. Back to the right though. Double teamed. Jermaine for the tie. No. Rebound long to Wingert. Shannon. Patterson. One more for the tie. No. Steinfeld rebound. William Jewell, they've had these open looks, but still just cannot convert them. Two for nine from outside the arc right now. You know, I think that's going to be something that head coach Chris McGabe is going to be want to be talking about in the locker room. McGabe, while he doesn't have a winning record, it has been slowly increasing over this entire season. 66 to 73 overall. Zach Zool open three. Zach Zool for a three. How about the Ohio Dominican transfer hitting a three ball, making a six point lead. McKinley wants to answer. He can do so. It's rain of threes. That's the one man you cannot leave open. Kobe McKinley. Well, when you got a name of Kobe and you're wearing a number 24 jersey, you know what's going to happen. You got it. He's embodying. McKinley has 11. Zach Zola into the front court. William Jules fans making some noise now. They have brought a really solid crowd from Kansas City. Liberty, it, it, Missouri. It's a good it's a good haul from here to Kansas City. Zool harassed up to Tynes. Screen right from Seinfeld. Tynes free throw line jumper is good. The Greyhounds look offensively more fluid than they did last week. And now looking to string together some defensive stops on the other end of the floor. Screen left from Wingert. He gets it back with a pick and pop. Backdoor cut couldn't find him. Now Shannon driving on Steinfeld, dishing over. McKinley, pump fake, thinking about it. Wingert's open on the other wing. He gets it. Cross court once again. Shannon into the corner. Patterson driving. Ingram off the backboard, blocked. Saved. Shannon, no good. It doesn't matter. Shot clock violation. Dylan Ingram off the glass. This is a, this is a highlight day for Dylan Ingram. What a day. Let's go down to our sound reporter, and Addison Mosley. Addison, what do you have for us? Both teams off to a rough start, but the UND Hounds have been working hard to keep that lead. Back to you guys. Thank you, Addison. Be 342 when we come back. You're watching the NCAA Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. I pledge, I pledge, I pledge, I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one.
What an insane ball game so far. 31-26 is the Greyhound advantage. And on both ends of the floor for both teams making some phenomenal plays. There you saw Dylan Ingram, the swat off the backboard. What a play, and the Greyhounds now get the possession after the shot clock violation. Looking to extend this lead up by five right now. Three and a half to go in the half. Down low, Choa gets it. Three defenders around him. It doesn't matter. Kendrick Choa is a man amongst boys, and a foul is going to be called <laughs> on the inbound going the other way. It'll be the fifth team foul on the Greyhounds. And that'll take us to a timeout, it seems. As they call a foul on Josiah Tynes. So they'll call a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside. If you're watching 2024 Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org slash opportunity. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Thirty-three twenty-six. a quick timeout on the floor for the foul on Josiah Tynes. William Jewell inbound, but the Greyhounds open up a seven-point lead. This is one of the larger leads they've had on William Jewell this season, Landon. But it's been a great ball game so far, and William Jewell, don't never be out of a game against you, anybody. You can, you can never count that out. William Jewell is one of those teams that we've seen this year, and that's just inevitable. You, when you think you have not beat, they can just never go away. Jermaine over into the front court now with 20 to shoot. Guarded by Bingham. Switches over onto Yija. Jermaine isolation. He'll take it himself. He'll drive. Swatted by Bingham or Yija. One of them or both of them. One of them got the block. The Greyhounds is a block party in here. Tynes will step back. Greyhounds lead by seven. Screen left from Choa. Back to him. He's up top. Now Bingham, 15 seconds to shoot. He'll drive inside. Bingham, turn around, mid-range. If that, it's in the paint. That's a J for Bingham. And two more. And the Greyhounds have their largest lead of the day at nine, not 35, 26. Sutton drives inside. Greyhounds prevent any further. The defense chance once again. Loud and proud here as a bad pass from Zhang. The backdoor cut from Sutton was wide open, but Zhang threw it behind him. And that's the fifth turnover on William Jewell. The Greyhounds lead by nine. One of the main things that I noticed last week, the Greyhounds had barely any bench points against William Jewell. Today, 13 bench points compared to William Jewell's zero as William Jewell sticks with the same five most of the game. I mean, every Greyhound so far today has at least, a, has at least excuse me, has at least one point except for Sean Craig, so all around the board. David Ejaw, straight away three, ball too strong, rebound tipped up and saved by Tynes, who gets it over the top to Ejaw, he corrals it, and he'll drive inside. We'll reset with Walker on the right side. He drives to the bucket, he goes, and Walker, two more for the Greyhounds. They lead by 11, 37-26, Greyhound advantage. Jarvis Walker's already got double-digit points. 11 on the day for him already. For Walker. Him and McKinley will both have 11 to themselves. Winger to Shannon. Guarded by Ija. Stepping back now over to Winger. Jermaine. Tynes guarding. Winger has one point so far. He had a big, a big impact in the game last week against the Greyhounds. McKinley, uh-oh. That one's too strong, though. McKinley's starting to cool off. The Greyhounds lead by 11 with the ball. Eja will drive to the bucket, and he got blocked away by Isaac Patterson. With a minute and 19, these Greyhounds 
some fight. Compared this to last team, year, they kind of dwindled out. I'll tell you what, this UND team looks extremely comfortable right now, and they're sitting pretty. They have a lot of confidence going into these shots. Tines they're taking up it. top, three ball, money! Greyhounds lead by 14, 40 to 26 Greyhounds. UND is on fire right now. Their largest lead of the season against these Cardinals. And what a shot from Tynes off the, he got a screen the right side and run off of it to knock down the three. There'll be a 30 second timeout on the floor, so we'll stay here. I think but right. Landon, what has changed these Rayhounds oh, just a week ago? It's like I just said, they're comfortable, they seem relaxed. A lot of the shots that they're taking are going right now. There's just something about this team that looks good. And they can definitely tell right now, too. UND lost this game one year ago. They were number one, one seed. They got, oh, yeah, okay. They, they, got, they lost one year ago against yeah. McKendry, eight seed versus one seed. And, fun fact, and I don't think they want to do that two years in a row. So they want to change that state. They want to like change that state. Last year, it McKendry is. was the GLVC champion, only got in the tournament because they won the GLVC. This it year, William Jewell only got in because they won the GLVC, and UND is the one seed. It's the same scenario as last year, and last year the Greyhounds, well, they got ran out of their own place. They got almost blown out by McKendry. You, you know this Corsaro and his crew, they don't want to be, they don't want that two years in a row. Jermaine trapped over to McKinley. Shannon down low for Wingert. Back to Shannon, the Greyhounds defensively have looked phenomenal these last six or seven minutes. They're on an 11-0 run right now in the last four minutes. Jewel needs a bucket, can they get one? 10 to shoot, driving, Patterson, picked up his dribble, got it over to Wingert, he'll drive inside, contested by Eja, beautifully, that's gonna be a yeah, block. How, how did he hold on to that? Shannon, the three ball, no good, rebound, Eja. The Greyhounds are playing their best ball of the season right now. About eight seconds separating shot clock and game clock, and the Greyhounds a 14 point lead. They'll hold things up momentarily, and now they'll go. Can they get one more bucket before the halftime break? They go with Walker with eight to shoot. He rips through behind his back, spinning. <laughs> what a move from Walker off the glass and in, Jarvis Walker. They inbound, still have oh, time for William Jewell to get a bucket. They give to Wingert with five. McKinley with two seconds, drives inside off the window. No, Greyhounds lead by 16 at halftime, 42-26. You, Wendy. And we'll it talk is. it over with head coach Paul Cornsaw, down the with Addison Mosley. Addison, what do you have for us? Well, I hope he keeps it going. He's had a heck of a first half. Yep. And how do you feel about the first half? You're in a big lead. I think we defended really well, but we didn't come here to play 20 minutes. We came here to play 40. I know that's right. Good job, coach. Thank you, Addison. We'll be right back here for second half action. You're watching the Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. Legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. Play with great love, they play with great passion today. Let it rip, let it rip, let it rip. We'll do it for one another, together. Together, 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 together,
In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Well, it's uh, so many memories, I would say. Um, I think the things that when my teammates and I get together, uh, what we enjoy the most, I think, are just all the stories, all the things that happen between us playing uh, against some of the best schools. You know, we played some Division I schools. Uh, we beat Eastern Illinois twice. A thrill for a Division II school to go in and, and, and to beat a Division I school. And I think we remember, you know, feeling like kind of the David versus Goliath. Um, and that's what I think uh, we realized if you can come together as a group, um, you know, that you can have success. Well, I think any competitive person, uh, it's tough. Uh, and, uh, but I still look at it today, you know, it's been 30 years since I played competitive basketball and um, in the business world and the education world, you lose and um, things happen and um, you go back to your playing days and you got knocked down and you got to get back up. Uh, so that was kind of our mantra. I think to have dreams. I just, as a little kid, I had dreams um, that I wanted to do something athletically, you know, and basketball was my passion. And so I don't care what it is, uh, do something that you like, that you're passionate about. That to me is, is the most important thing. And then work to achieve it. Um, and if, if you work hard enough at it, I think your dreams can come true, even when people tell you it'll never happen. Um, and that to me was kind of the David versus Goliath thing. Yeah, I, I, and it's a cliche, but um, I do think uh, life is a game. Life is a competition. Um, and I think I was prepared because I competed in college and I say the same thing to people, you, you kind of those same attributes. You have to work hard, you have to practice what you want to do, and you have to believe in yourself, and, and you have to have those dreams, and um, you put that package together, and, and I think it's a pretty good package for success. Hi, I'm Larry Tucker. I'm a former NCAA student athlete from Lewis University. Being a champion takes more than talent. More than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. From court to court and lane.
to lay under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back inside the home of the Greyhounds. That's Nickerson Hall. A pretty solid crowd out here. William Jewell bringing a lot of faithful, but the Greyhounds, they filled it out quite nicely in all honesty. Yeah, I mean, looking over here, we do have the lacrosse team over here. They had a massive win earlier today against the number two team. Wow. So shout being out able, to them. Shout out lacrosse team. Being able to come out here and support your, your fellow Greyhounds. There's your first half stat. The Greyhounds up by 16. 61% from the field. But the difference, in my opinion, is that William Jewell three-point shooting. And they hit about 10 threes a game at a 38% clip. So far today, 25%, three of 12. And they've had open looks. They just haven't knocked them down. Is that necessarily the Greyhounds out rebounding William Jewell by nine as well? The Greyhounds ended the half on a 13-0 run. Landon, 13-0 to end the half. It was a three-point ball game, and the Greyhounds just took over. I mean, they exploded onto the scene, and like I said, Jason, this, I mean, this is a team that just looks so comfortable right now with where they're at now. And, you know, another thing you got to look at on the UNI side of things is the rebound and turnover battle, too. Ten UNI rebounds compared to William Jewell's ten, and William Jewell has more turnovers, five to four. So Corsaro and his Greyhounds are hitting all the benchmarks that they want to hit. They're hitting all the checkpoints. I think the big key factor is can they keep it up for another... 20, or excuse me, for another 20 minutes. Here it's come like the Cardinals back on to the floor of the GLVC Tournament Champions. Matt gave them the automatic bid here. We're going to interview with head coach Chris McCabe of the William Jewell Cardinals when we get a chance as he walks out of the tunnel. He's a fifth-year head coach, 67, 66 and 73 on his career. He's the fifth. This is his fifth year, like I said. This is his best season by far, leading William Jewell to their first ever Division II Regional they're pretty fresh in Division Two, coming up from NAIA just 10 years ago. That's you know, looking out in the William Jewell Tunnel, I mean, we don't we really we don't ever talk about him because he's been out with an injury. Grant Stubbs, he's been out with an injury uh, about halfway through the season. Imagine what this team could have been like with him. Let's go down to the sideline with Addison Mosley with head coach Chris McCabe. Addison, what do you have for us? All right, so down at half, what adjustments will you make and continue to make with the team to come back for the second half? Got to try to do a good job of keeping them out of the paint. They've been terrific about being able to get the ball in the paint and score, hit a cutter, um, and then when we're getting the ball in the paint, we're not converting. So they deserve credit for how well they're playing. We got to hit a couple of our open ones we missed. Yeah, of course. And then Kobe McKinley has 11 points so far. How are you going to keep him his motivation going for the rest of the game? Yeah, he's the best. Fifth-year senior. He knows what's at stake. He knows, he, you know, conference tournament MVP for a reason. He's a heck of a player. All right, thank you so much, Coach. All right, now back to you guys. Thank you, Addison. You heard from Chris McKay. Like he, like he said, McKinley was the GLVC conference tournament player of the tournament. He had a great performance in that tournament. Let's take a look at some first half highlights. Jordan Germain, he had five points in a row, but he missed that one there. He's out of the rebound on that. But what a first half it was. It was close all game long, as we had seen from previous matchups in these two, in these two, in these last three matchups between, between these two squads. But the Greyhounds really just pulled it away in the, to end the half. I mean, for sure. I mean, you look at some of these replays here. A lot of, I think a lot of this on the defensive end you look at for UND has been David Ejali and, and Julian Steinfeld. Julian's been doing a lot of work offensive and defensively, offensively setting up the screens to allow and players like this, Jarvis Walker. One from David this is, that, that was awesome. Seeing that from David Ejali. 
put that on a highlight reel. But it was a fun first half. We still have 20 minutes to go. This game far from over, Landon. I mean, William Jewell, phenomenal shooting squad. If they get hot, they're going to be they're going to be up against one in minutes. And I think that's something that all these UND fans have to look out for is, yes, while they do have the lead, you got to be mindful for what William Jewell can do. Like you said, Jason, they get red hot. They're, they're not going to stop. But, I mean, it's like what you heard Coach Corsaro say. We're here to play 40 minutes, not 20 minutes. And I think after what we just saw from the UND team, I mean, I don't see why there would be any reason for them to slow down. One minute till we get back underway. Landon, what are the keys for both teams heading, heading the second half here? Honestly, for you, just keep doing what you've been doing on both ends of the court. Keep doing what you've been doing in the same song and dance. William Jewell, I mean, I think you got to get more comfortable with your shots here. Start lighting up from beyond the arc here. Start lighting up those threes. Threes really haven't been in their favor. Only 25%. And this team is known for being a, a three-point team such as, you know, Isaac Patterson, Jordan Jermaine, Kobe McKinley, all those guys. You get those guys going, it's going to be it's going to be a tough, tough thing for you and you to come back on. But we'll get set out here. The Greyhounds and the Grey going to inbound to begin in the second half as they lost the first half tip. They lead by 16. And, Landon, I think these first five or so minutes are going to be the most important minutes. These first four heading into that first media timeout are going to be the most important minutes of these games. If Uindy can really open this lead up, it'll be tough for Jewel to get back. But if Jewel can go on a little run to begin the second half here, things will get interesting. That's how a lot of coaches say the first four minutes of the, of the second half it, are the some of the most important it, minutes of the game. It's the make or break. So we'll get into these first four minutes here with Josiah Tynes. He John up top. Bingham on the right side will drive left-handed. Slip and lost it. It'll be a jump ball. The possession arrow going the way of William Jewell. Tynes lost his footing heading into that GLBC logo. We're going to put the floor to make sure that spot's good for next time. The Greyhounds first possession and lose it. And the Greyhounds some pressure in the full court. We'll see how much of it they actually apply. As McKinley inbounds to Jermaine. And they go over the top, over the hands of Bingham and McKinley, and then back to Jermaine and into the front court over the eye. Jermaine, pump faking, Tynes recovers, guards. Now McKinley, 13 to shoot. Back to Jermaine, guarded by Tynes, 10 to shoot, screen right from Wingert. Winger all alone down low, they go down to him, saves it. Choa guarding with four to shoot, backdoor cut, Winger has to get one off, turn around, mid range, jumper. Eli Winger gets his first field goal of the game, and he had a great game against the Greyhounds last Saturday, and he looks to get going. If he gets going, that's going to be a big spark for the Cardinals. Tynes on the wing. 15 on the shot clock. He drives. Turns around, goes over to Ejon on the left side. Down low for Kendrick Shoa. Guarded by three defenders. Over to Bingham. Right wing, three balls off the front rim. No good. Rebound McKinley. Here come the Cardinals. McKinley's throwing things down, hands up to Wingert. Wingert will drive. Go over to Shannon, who will pump fake and drive. Wingert thought about a three. Now over to McKinley. The Greyhounds recover once again defensively. Between the legs twice for McKinley. McKinley lost it going up. A foul on Bingham will be two shots for Kobe McKinley. For Bingham, that'll be his first. And now McKinley at the line for the first time today. In terms of free throws combined for the teams, only three free throw shot today. Been a very clean game, in all honesty. McKinley, 66% at the line this season, missed the first, but he hit some big free throws last Saturday to really close it out for the Cardinals in that GMVC semifinal. The first one from him, no good though. He has 11 points so far. The first, the second one, I should say, also misses. Two misses, maybe via the scream from the, the lacrosse, lacrosse team. team over there. <laughs> A distance screen gets McKinley to miss both. Bingham, E. John, 13 on the shot clock for Bingham now as he flex once again. Guarded by Shannon, Tynes, a three, that's gonna be strong. The rebound tipped in the air and it's corralled by a foul. They're gonna be called on David E. John. Gonna be his second. 
The Greyhounds so far, three possessions, three empty possessions. It's been a little bit of a cold start so far. I mean, really, honestly, for both sides. You know, halftime hit right in the point of that run they were making. We got William Jewell to recollect their thoughts. Looking for a bucket here to get back with into this. Patterson. McKinley. They go left for Jermaine. Guarded closely by Walker with six to shoot. Double team times. Tested three from Jermaine. It's good. Here comes William Jewell. And Jason, it's like you said earlier, once Jordan Jermaine gets hot, you can't cool him off. Eja over to Tynes, Grant's looking for the first bucket of the half still. Bingham, Eja, corner, three ball, no, rebounded in the air and collected by Jermaine. Greyhounds now over four possessions this half. Jermaine to Wingert, what a move by Wingert, but he couldn't finish it off. And Eja, double teamed, trapped, goes over to Tynes, who gets it into the front court with Walker. Walker will drive himself, left hand off the glass, no good, but fouled and two shots for Jarvis Walker at the free throw line. He's the second Greyhound to go to the line of the day. Eja was one for one off an and one. Two for Jarvis Walker at the line. He leads the way with 13 points for the Greyhounds. He's 76% on the season from the stripe. Walker been really the go-to scorer these last seven or so games to the Greyhounds. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier too, before the GLVC, tournament averaging nearly 22 points a game the lid remains the greyhounds this half as walker misses the first steinfeld and sean craig both check in one more for walker second one also no good and the rebound to william jewell Patterson has it, hands off to McKinley. McKinley guarded by Tynes. Has a size matchup, we'll see if he takes it. Screen left from Winger, he'll pull the three ball. McKinley, front rim, no good, rebound in the air. Tipped out of bounds off Jermaine. Greyhound basketball. Zach Zuhl will now check in for Jarvis Walker. So the Hounds have those three usual subs and Zach Zuhl, Sean Craig, and Julian Stafford in the game. And how about the game Steinfeld's having so far? Six points, six rebounds, two blocks. Leads the way in rebounds and blocks so far today. And there's six points, just an extra touch to it. Greyhound still up by 11, but have not scored this half. Bingham with it. Seinfeld rolling back into the paint. Bingham will look to drive. Can't do so now. Zool will drive, splitting defenders. And what a move by Zool in the air, but he couldn't get it to go. And the Greyhound still cannot get that middle of the basket to begin the half. Patterson will drive. Pick it back up to, for, for Winger and then back to Patterson on the one, two. McKinley on the right side, ripping through on Sean Craig behind his back. Screen right from Winger. Winger rolls down low. Patterson in the corner was open. Step back, three pointer. Patterson looked online but fell off the left side of the rim. Sean Craig turn around, left hand hook shot. No. Rebound, Jewel. Four minutes and no baskets for the Greyhounds. And McKinley drives. Hero steps around. Steinfeld layup. No good, but a putback dunk by Eli Wingert. Nine point ball game. And when you can get the batter of the seven footer of Julius Steinfeld, that's definitely going to that's definitely gonna get the, the blood flowing a little bit. Timeout. Greyhounds also counts the under 16 media timeout. And then all of a sudden, here come the Cardinals. Seven nothing run. The nine point ball game. You're watching the, 20, the 2024 Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. I told you. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org opportunity.
In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Tensions beginning to rise here at Nickerson Halls. The Greyhounds have gone scoreless to begin the half. 0 for 5 on field goals. It's been a 7-0 run to begin the half. The Cardinals and the Greyhounds out of the halftime break. Maybe the halftime break hit at the worst time possible. The Greyhounds were on a serious run. But the halftime buzzer cut what could have been more. And now William Jewell, one of their own. It's a game of runs right now. Can the Greyhounds answer with one of their own? Out of the timeout, Zach Zuhl will hand off to Bingham. It's been four and a half minutes and no bucket to the Greyhounds. Bingham wants to change that. He'll drive inside. He goes to the bucket. He got the pass tipped off the rim, and then the ball was tipped off of Steinfeld's leg. And now it'll be also our under-16 media timeout, so two straight timeouts. So we'll go ahead and step aside once again. You're watching the 2024 Division II of Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. and the Greyhounds still can't get that lid off the buckets. And they lost the ball out of bounds after it went off Stein, Steinfeld's leg. So William Jewell a chance to cut even more into this lead. Landon, what has William Jewell done right out of the halftime break? Made buckets. Well, I'm, I'm, saying, I mean, I'm saying defensively. Oh, defensively. I mean, they're just able, I mean, we kind of said earlier on that William Jewell is one of these teams that can read you into like a bug. And then that's what they've decided to do now. They've opened it up. They're able to, to tear piece by piece out of this uni defensive playbook, and it's just been working. It's been working wonders. Over to Winger. Back to a cut from Patterson. Didn't get it there. Now Winger's still with it. Gets it to McKinley. Guarded. Face guarded by Bingham. He works the right side. McKinley's turnaround jumper. No good. Falls out off the back rim. Walker the rebound. The Greyhounds scoreless for five minutes, but still lead by nine. Walker will drive down low and he threw it away. It hit Braden McLaughlin right in the knee. The Greyhounds, the seventh turnover of the game. And McKinley will inbound for William Jewell. The Greyhounds really struggling offensively right now to get one to go. Jewell still down by nine though. Only seven points in this half, and five minutes and some change. As they go over the top, Jermaine driving, got his arm held by Zach Zuhl. That'll be the third team foul on the Greyhounds, and Zach Zuhl second. William Bauf out of the basket with a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Joel and Ingram back in. Steinfeld out and Bingham out. So inbounding will be Jordan Germain. They go right into Patterson. He'll drive left hand. Blocked by Ingram. Recovered though. Shannon over to Wingert. Down low. Tipped away by Walker. A foul on Jarvis Walker. 
And that'll be Walker's first. And the fourth team foul as well. And time to, time to check in for Jarvis Walker. And once again, a fresh 20 in the ball for William Jewell. This is the inbound with Jermaine. They go over the top for Wingert. Guarded by Kendrick Choa. Wingert still with it. Over to the corner. Shannon, a three ball. Fell, no foul, no bucket. Sean Craig, the rebound. The Greyhounds still doing great defensively, but can they get a bucket? It's been six minutes within the half, no bucket. Sean Craig. Back up top for Tynes. William Jewell showing some pride defensively now. Tynes over to Ingram, down low for Choa, and then another Greyhound turnover. Down the floor come the Cardinals. Patterson, Jermaine pump faking, driving inside. McKinley wide open, no. Greyhounds luck out there. The Greyhounds somehow still up by nine, and they haven't scored in six and a half minutes, Landon. I don't know, I don't even know how this is imaginable <laughs> right now. Nearing a seven minute scoring streak for the Greyhounds. As Kendrick Cho was with it. Tynes will go to the left. Back for Zach Zool, looking for a three ball. No good, McKinley the rebound. Down the court quickly, Shannon the easy lay. Seven point ball game. The Greyhounds into the front court. Seven minutes, no bucket. Choa on the pick and roll, and he got it stripped from behind. And once again, this would be, this would be a kickball on the Greyhounds, though. The Greyhounds just cannot find a way to get one. They had the play there on the pick and roll, and Choa had a chance, but he got uh, stripped that, from behind. It was, it was just great. That's great two times now for Choa. I mean, it's just been miscommunication or just bad luck has hit him at the worst time imaginable. And he's going to pick and roll here. There's going to be a hard foul on Wingert. He'll go to the free throw line. William Jewell right back in this game. That'll be the second on Julian Steinfeld. Wingert to the free throw line. Wingert today, five points. One for two from the line. He's a 57% shooter on the season. It's his fourth start in a row for William Jewell. All in tournament games. Started two games the, the whole season before that. Wingert's first is strong. Got screaming again in the back. <laughs> it's been a 9-0 run for William Jewell to begin the half. And to begin the half, we're almost halfway through the half. Wingert one more. That one is also strong. The rebound tipped out to Tynes. <laughs> Something about these buckets, not, in the, I mean, they're at a premium right now. Any points for both teams. Can the Greyhounds finally get one, though? No, we'll see. Ej on the handoff. Steinfeld up top. Over to Sean Craig on the right side. And we're going to go down low for Bingham. It's going to be a foul on William Jewell. It's the second team foul. No inbound from under the basket. Bet on goal on Jordan Germain, his second foul. Tottenham's will inbound over the top to Bingham. Bingham has some room. He'll step back, drive inside, floater, left hand push, no good. Up and in by Steinfeld. There's the bucket. If you would have told me that you would have even gotten their first points of the half, seven and a half minutes into the, into the I would have told you you were crazy. I told, would have told you the lion. And I think Ejon got a block. They're going to call another foul on the Greyhounds. A 16th foul. This one going on David Ejon. It'll be his third. And that'll send Shannon to the free throw line. Corsaro giving the ref an earful. Yeah. Assistant coach Yadier Ferguson trying to, trying to hold him back. Shannon shooting two free throws. He's 85% on the season. His first trip today to the line. The first of which is good. 12-11 to play here. Walker looking to check back in at the next chance. Now he will. He'll come in for David Eja, who has those three fouls to his name. The Greyhounds next foul will put William Jewell in the bonus already. Not ideal for the Greyhounds. 
We lead by eight. And one more for Shannon at the line. Shannon, second one, good. Seven point ball game once again. William Jewell, faithful, making some noise here. Defensively strong, William Jewell right now. Allowed two points so far in this half. Bingham rolling around to the right side. Walker pushing off his defender. A foul is going to go on Jordan Germain. The third team foul and the third on Germain. That puts him in some foul trouble now to bring us to our under 12 media timeouts. And at the under 12, well, only 12 points have been scored combined in the second half so far. That'll bring us to that under 12 media timeouts. You're watching the 2024 Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. I've pledged. I've pledged. I've pledged. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team on my campus and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. The lead still there for the Greyhounds. It's still seven but maybe a little bit more uncomfortable than they wanted to be heading into the halftime break. They're up by 16. They've seen that lead slowly go away, but they still lead by seven, even with only having scored two points in the half, Landon. Really unusual. This is, this is the most uncharacteristic thing I've seen from the Greyhounds all season long. I mean, end of the I mean, they've only got two points this entire one. It's like I said before the break, if you would have told me UND would have gotten their first points seven and a half minutes in to the second half, I would have told you you've been crazy. Walker running, three ball straight away. There it is from Jarvis Walker, the three-pointer, back up by 10, the Greyhounds. And if you're William Drew, you gotta be kicking yourself that you didn't make a bigger run in that in that scoring drought for the Greyhounds. Well, yeah, I mean, you got Chris McGabe, I mean, he's just, he's starting to watch down. I mean, he's, if you get Jarvis Walker cooking, it's gonna, you're gonna, totally just lost some words right out of my mouth, and you're totally gonna, you gotta watch out for it. McKinley over to Shannon with 10 to shoot. Patterson in the corner. Steinfeld guarding, jab, one, two, drives inside. Blocked by Steinfeld from behind. And the rebound corralled, one to shoot. Shot clock, no, he got off in time. They reached up the shot clock and he got it. I don't think the ball hit the rim. I'm not sure if the ball hit the rim. I think they're gonna I, review this because I'm not sure if the ball hit the rim originally because if the ball hits the rim, the shot clock resets. If the ball did not hit the rim, that would have been a talk like violation Here, on William Jewell. Let's see if this tells anything for us. No, that's the shot from Jermaine. It was a great shot, knocking it down. Oh, okay. See what they call mm. here. There was the shot from Jermaine. He thought that the shot clock was winding down, so he just threw one up there. And and they can they count it? So they say the Lucky ball did break. hit the rim on the block from Steinfeld, and that gives Jermaine the bucket. It's a big break for William Jewell as they answer the three-pointer from Jarvis Walker. 11 minutes to play here, and the Greyhounds up by seven against the team that knocked them out of the GLBC tournament last weekend. Sean Craig over to Walker, double team down low. Steinfeld got stripped from behind, and there'll be Greyhound ball still. The Greyhound's trying to use that size advantage that he has down low. Tines will inbound. Still 16 seconds to shoot. As they go to Sean Craig. He'll pull one, and he'll knock one down. Sean Craig, threes raining now. Both teams getting some offensive rhythm going. Big shot from Sean Craig as he lays that one down. Rolling to the left, kicking over McKinley. Can he answer once again? No. The rebound to the Greyhounds and Walker. Greyhounds lead by 10 with the ball. But yeah, William Jewell has got to be 
mad at themselves they didn't cut into this lead more in that scoring draws. Walker steps back, and here come the Greyhounds. Here comes the offensive basketball. 12 point lead. Jarvis Walker has not missed a three pointer. Shannon yeah, this game. driving inside on Seinfeld. Look at the size of Seinfeld down low. And Sean Craig on a steal will call another foul. And that'll be a one and one for William Jewell. That's not, that's not what you want if you're the Greyhounds because it stops the clock and it gives William Jewell a chance at three points. And Jordan Germain, who's an 88% free throw shooter, the last guy who wanted to send the line for free throws. He has 11 points so far, Germain. It's a one and one, though. So every foul from here on out will result in free throws for, for William Jewell. The front end of the one and one for Jordan Germain is good. Like I said, Germain, the last guy you want to send to the line, he's 88% that leads the team, and he's third in the GLVC on free throws. One more for Germain. The back end of the one and one now, he hit the first. He's good. 10 point lead. We hit, when you're in the 10 minute mark, the deficit is 10 for William Jewell. Bingham up top over to Walker. Walker driving inside. Right hand hook shot too strong. Rebound tipped around to McKinley. Quickly get the floor here. Patterson. Transition three ball. Isaac Patterson. Down to seven. Tynes now with it. Screen left from Steinfeld. He'll roll. And the ball in the air is over by McKinley. It's miscommunication there in transition from William Jewell. We're also in the Greyhound getting back on defense. But a chance for William Jewell to make it a two possession game with the basket. They go over. Jermaine, three pointer. No. That would have been a momentum changer right there. Jarvis Walker. Grabbing inside once again. Over to Tynes. He wants a three. And he's got a three. Josiah Tynes. The Greyhounds answering the bell right now. Leads the remains 10. The Greyhounds trying to cruise control this one out. McKinley. A spin. Look at his dribble. Lost it. It's in the air. Bingham's a steal. What a steal for Bingham. Well, this is what we're seeing from the Greyhounds now. They're getting comfortable. They're finding that rhythm and that momentum that they had in the first half. I think they're starting to find it again. I think it's the same old song and dance. Walker up top. Rips through. Drives inside. Blocked up the glass, but a foul came before, I think, on the drive. I think that will go on Shannon as he wanted to steal the one from behind, but we'll see what they call on officially. You know, it will go on Eli Wingert. That's that's a, that'll, be, that'll be the second on Wingert and the fourth on William Jewell. It was also a shooting foul as Walker was driving inside. It'll be two shots for Jarvis Walker at the free throw line. He has 18 points today, Jarvis Walker. He's 76% on the season from the line. He went 0 for 2 earlier today, though. This is the Greyhound's only fourth and fifth free throws today. Walker missed both earlier. This time also another miss, 0 for 3. Show back in the game for the Greyhounds. UND still out rebounding William Jewell, 31-20. And also, William Jewell has not made a single sub this half. Like I that's said, a, they a, love a, this five they have thing. on the floor. Walker, that one is good. 11-point Greyhound advantage. Isaac Patterson, a pure shooter. This is over to Winger, driving inside. Choa wanted to swat it away, but probably a smart play. That's a foul. And Winger gets his bucket. Up to seven now for him. Lead nine. Zool drives. Walker. Step back. Mid-range jumper. Jarvis <laughs> Walker is a pure shooter. 21 points for Jay Walk. Is it possible that Jarvis Walker is a real-life video game cheat code? I don't know. It's a discussion that maybe needs to be had one day. But Jordan Germain looking for an answer, and he does so. And a timeout will be called by William Jewell. So that'll bring us to that full timeout. It's still a nine-point lead, but William Jewell, they're sticking around. 
7.46 left to go when we return. You're watching the 2024 Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. The lead is still nine for the Greyhounds, but there's still 7.46 to play in this one. William Jewell, he's at a halftime. They're never out of a game, and I mean, in no way are they out of this. Three threes and it'd be a tie ball game, and that is really easy for Jewell at times, those three threes. But they've hit six today, they're six of 21, 29% from outside of the arc. It's really uncharacteristic for them yeah, in I terms mean, of percentages. Yeah, it's not really it's not really their go-to thing. I mean, last game, compared to, compared to the last game where they won the championship, 45 percent well they took down lewis for the glbc championships yeah this is a very un un william jewel like day for him so we'll get the ball down low a spin and he hit the basket was too low under there but winger gets charged for the foul that'll be the third on winger and send Choa to the free throw line for two big shots i think it's crazy to think that kid Chow only has four points on the day Choa at the line, the first is good. I think, I, think, I think every UND fan just, just did a collective sigh of relief. Choa at the line is 58% of the season, was, was near the 45% mark about 10 games ago. Really worked his way back up into that stat. Second one is good. Low arcing, line drive free throws, both of them good. Greyhounds back up by 11 with 7.30 to go. Looking to see this one out against a team that's really had their number this year. Shannon, Winger guarded by Choa closely. And a foul is gonna go on Kendrick Choa. And another one and one for William Jewell. Like I said, William Jewell in the bonus. Last thing you wanna do here in UND, that's foul and give him three shots, three shots with the stop clock, with the clock stopped. <laughs> Missed that one. <laughs> So Winger, a one one the line today. He's missed a few, and he missed another one. All of them have been long, and he's missed today. Winger struggling from the free throw line. He's one for five. The Greyhounds control up by 11. A chance to really break this one free now. David Eja on the right wing. Bingham up top. He'll go over to Walker in the corner. Three-pointer, no good. Eja on the opposite rebound, though. Recovers it and backs things back out to Jarvis Walker. Open in the corner. It won't matter. Jarvis Walker nailed the three. But an offensive foul is going to go on David Ejai for a moving screen. If you're Ejai, you got to be careful now. You're in the danger zone. I mean, that's your fourth foul. The fourth foul, Sean Craig will check in. And just a note, Bingham had 33 points last game, a career high. He has four today. William Jewell doing a much better job of defending him. And the Greyhounds, well, they've gone to Walker in the absence of Bingham scoring. Then again, you got to think Bingham is also a, a really good second half player. Another 6.50 left to go here in second half, and the Greyhounds lead by 11. Over to Shannon, pump faking, working on Walker, driving inside, off of Walker, and a foul. Big and one for Trey Shannon. And once again to the free throw line for William Jewell. 85% on the season is Shannon. He's two for two today. He has 11 points to his name. Looking to overtake McKinley for second leading score for William Jewell with the bucket here. That one is good. Eight point ball game. 60 to 52.
Tynes with it. They go up top for Bingham. Bingham thought about pulling one, but goes back to the Tynes. 15 to shoot, halfway to the shot clock. Bingham will roll to the right side. Back things out. Go down low for Choa. One on one down low, stolen by Wingert, and that'll be the fourth foul on Eli Wingert. That's big time. Wingert fouled out last week, a week ago today, in that game against the Greyhounds in regulation, and they still saw it out in overtime. That'll be the 16th foul. One more will put the Greyhounds in the bonus. Wingert has to be careful now. And they might attack him. We'll see if they do so. They go to Sean Craig first. Now Walker. Bingham. Now they want Choa down low. They couldn't get it there, so they go to Tynes. He pulls a long three ball. Josiah Tynes! He shot that from the circle. Oh, man. Josiah Tynes with a big three-point shot. Up by 11, the Greyhounds again. Down low, stolen by Bingham, and it's going to be... A kick ball on the Greyhounds. So a fresh shot clock for William Jewell. No reset now with just under six minutes to play. The Greyhounds up by 11. Can William Jewell make a comeback? We've seen two comebacks today. One that fell short. One was completed. McKinley. Jermaine. Ripping through on Bingham, a foul, and two more shots for William Jewell the line. The stop from Forzaro. Well, obviously I'm not too happy with these fouls that have been committed in this half. It's now 11 team fouls in this half, so they're way over the bonus now. It's two shots at the rest of the way out for every foul the Greyhounds commit. And that'll send Jermaine, the best shooter on the team from the line, to the two of the charity stripe. Jermaine, the first, is good. Lead back down to 10. William Jewell trying to stick around in this one. Jermaine, one more at the line. He has 16 points today. Make it 17. Back down to nine. Greyhounds control, and I'm sure they'll look to take the air out of the ball here in this one. Try to slow things down. As they go to Kendrick Choa, they hand off for Walker. Walker rolls around to the right side over to Sean Craig. Back to Walker. Two defenders in the, in the area. They go down low for Choa, and he gets the easy bucket off the glass as Winger is trying to stay out of foul trouble. He's on fourth foul as he wants to stay away from that fifth foul. So playing soft defense against Choa. Greyhounds back up by 11. McKinley. Guarded by Tynes. 15 to shoot. Crossing over. McKinley. And Almost Winger. lost his footing. Guarded by Choa. Over the top. Here's Patterson with eight to shoot. Now guarded by Choa, double teamed to Sean Craig. Flips it over, and there's no one in the area. Stolen away originally, and then goes into the hands of Winger, who got fouled right before the shot violation. Another foul on the Greyhounds. We'll send Winger to the line. The Greyhounds had the easy steal, but it looked like Choa tipped it away from Walker. Or was it the other way around? Either way, the Greyhounds lost the steal, and once again sent Jewel to the free throw line. At the line this time will be Eli Winger. He's one for five from the line today. Still nursing that shoulder a little bit as he hurt it last week against the Greyhounds. Two more tots for him. He has seven points today, four rebounds, and four fouls. Can he knock down some big free throws here? The first one is good. The free throws keeping the Cardinals in the game right now. Yeah, I mean, look at look at them in the first half. I mean, they only have, they're only one for two on free throws in the first half. Second half, seven for 12. Second one, no good. Rebounded strong by Kendrick Choa. That's his fifth board of the day. He has eight points to go along with that. But it's been the Jarvis Walker show today, 21 points. Tynes with it. Once again, taking the air out of the ball. The Greyhounds leading by 10. Sean Craig on the wing. Patterson guarding. Here's Walker, 21. He lost it, got it back though. With eight to shoot, here goes Walker. Walker, 23. I mean, what else can I say about Jarvis Walker? And stolen by Bingham. Almost tapped it out of bounds into the table on the near side court. The Greyhounds up by 12. They've really controlled the second half minus that eight minute scoring drought, but they still play great defense all the whole way through. Can they see this ball game out? Leading by 12, nearing the four minute mark. Trey Shannon with it. He works to the right side. 
Picks it over across court. Jermaine, he's the three, a big one for Williams. Will no good, Sean Craig rebounds. Tines the outlet pass, and the Greyhounds, four minutes controlled by 12, the lead. Tines has hit some big shots in this one too. Tines 11 points, not really the game we used to see from him in terms of scoring, because usually he's up now near five or six points a game with a lot of assists, but today it's been scoring for Tines to the way. He's almost to a season high, I mean his season high is 12. Bingham, jump stop, an uncharacteristic mid-range miss, and then a foul on Kendrick Choa will send William Joel to the free throw line when we come back out of the timeout. So a 12 point Greyhound lead, two free throws. And we come back for William Jewell's 12 point Greyhound advantage. You're watching the 2024 Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. 3.45 left to go. It's the third of four games here in quarterfinal Saturday in the NCAA Division II Midwest Regional. We've seen two upsets so far, the seven seed Upper Iowa taking down the two seed, Wesleyan, and the six seed, Old Superior State taking down the three seed, and Walsh. Can the Greyhounds avoid the same fate? Well, right now they're up by 12 as the one seeded host against a Cardinal team that beat them just a week ago today in the conference semifinals. Looking for some revenge today. Looking to avoid the same fate they fell into last year in the same game they fell last year against the McHenry Bearcats. But Jermaine at the line looking to get the Jewel back within some points here. Jermaine, so far today, perfect from the line, four for four. The first of which is no good. Jordan Jermaine, an 88% free throw shooter, is short on that free throw. That's his first miss of the entire game. He leads the way, 17 points for the Cardinals. Second free throw for William Jewel. And Jordan Jermaine is good. Back down to 11. The Greyhounds inbound, and the time is on their side right now. Tynes guarded by Goodsa. He's in the game for the first time for William Jewell. Goodsa from Luton, England. Walker will drive off the window. No good, but Kendrick Joa the put back off the glass. To the window, to the wall. Yeah, Landon? Yes, I did. <laughs> Quoting songs now, are we? The Greyhounds lead by 13. Patterson splits two into the corner of Goodsa. His first shot of the day is no good. Rebound to Saya Tynes. And the Greyhounds really in control right now. With three minutes to go to lead by 13. Sean Craig hands off the Tynes. Right at half court. Walker gets it. Walker controls. Screen from Craig. Walker drives, pump fakes over in the corner. Tynes, he drives, step back, jumper. Josiah Tynes is no good. And the Choa can't get the rebound. McKinley grabs it. Two and a half to play as they go to the corner for Shannon. A three ball. Here comes the Cardinals. They're not dead yet. Shannon knocks down the three ball and a quick timeout from head coach Chris McCabe and William Jewell to talk things over. It'll be a 30 second timeout. So we'll stay here. But Landon, if you're the Greyhounds, how can you prevent this comeback from William Jewell? I say try to keep that trap defense, keep going strong. I mean, that's something you, we've seen accustomed to, this two-man defense, a 2v1. We, I mean, like I said, we've been used to. Keep that up, keep it up strong. You just got to get William Jewell out of their comfort zone, and they've been doing that pretty well. The buzzer rings, the Greyhounds lead by 10. 
once again, time's on their side, so they can use most of that shot clock if they want to do so. And also, you want to prevent William Jewell from those early buckets like that. Because that bucket came within five seconds of the shot clock. They got that one off quickly. Yeah, this and is it's an interesting tactic right now, going with Goodsa in the game. They sat Winger out, so they went with less size on the floor with Goodsa. Winger is still in this game. He wants to come back in, only on four fouls. As the Greyhounds inbound, Tynes to Craig, back to Tynes, and into the front court with Bingham. Bingham will slow things down, take the air out of the ball once again for Tynes. Guarded by Goodsa. Face guard at Goodsa is a really good defender. Bingham gets it off his foot. Kicks over to Tynes with eight to shoot. Here goes Bingham. Bingham, step back. Looking to get some points to his name. He has, I think, four so far. Walker with two to shoot. Step back. Jumper. No. Rebound. Goes into the hands of Bingham, who saves his foot. Was out of bounds. One size shoe too big for for Bingham. He's really close there. And here comes Eli Winger back in the game for Goodsa. It's going to be a like-for-like -like trade that they'll do here. Winger is for in for offense. Goodsa is in for defense. As Winger, they don't want Winger to foul out. But the Greyhounds lead by 10, two minutes to go. William Joel not out of it yet, though. If they get the three ball going, if they can, they'll be right back in this one in no time. The three ball just hasn't been on their side. Just only 29%. Jermaine oh, with it in his right hand. Down inside, Wingert gets the easy lay. Eight point ball game. They inbound to Tynes into the front court with Walker. You think they'll slow things down? Now they will. Got to be careful here. William Jules with an eight. Here's time. It's a minute and a half left to go in this ball game. Now they're going motion with 13 on the shot clock. Tynes, Walker up top. Missed the bucket last time. Held up inside. This time it'll go up off the window. It rolls out. The rebound it goes into Isaac Patterson's hands. Here comes William Jewell. Patterson thought about a transition three. Didn't take it. Gives the winger. Back to Patterson. Here's McKinley. He can shoot the ball, and he will not get that one to go. He hit a shot like that last weekend, and a foul is going to go on William Jewell. But if you're going to foul, maybe the guy you want to foul for a one-on-one, -on -one, Kendrick Choa. That's a similar shot to, that's almost the same play that they used for McKinley to hit the game-tying three last weekend against the Greyhounds and send it to overtime. But this time around, he missed it, and that would have been a real big shot for William Jewell. Choa at the line for a one and one as William Jewell began the foul game now. A big free throw here for Kendrick Choa. It's good. Greyhounds lead by nine minutes to go. On the cusp of getting a regional win against the team that just knocked them out seven days ago. Choa, one more free throw. And that's also good. Choa, four for four from the line today. Big four shots for him. William Jewell not out of it yet, though. Patterson with the ball. They can shoot lights out. Can they get some threes to drop? McKinley can do so. Now here's Winder. Taking a long time for William Jewell to get a shot off here. Shannon will drive inside, looking for a jumper. Backdoor cut from Jermaine. Lost it. Maybe travel. No travel was called. And now a pushing foul on Jarvis Walker will be called. And two shots for William Jewell. I think the travel should have been called there. He lost the ball I, and picked it back up. I, I agree with you on, on that one. So at the free throw line is Trey Shannon. He has 15 points today. He's three for three from the line. It'll actually be Jermaine, excuse me. Jermaine, five and six from the line today, 18 points. He has four fouls as well. Jermaine's first is good. Good step back in the game for defense and possibly play the foul game as well because Winger has more fouls. They don't want him to foul out. They, they might do the same here for the shooter. And Jordan Jermaine, who also has four fouls, he makes it, he'll sub out. As predicted, here comes Justin Sutton. And for the first time today, Kyle Scarborough. Winger and Jermaine both on four fouls will check out as the, the Cardinals look to play the foul game. 
will trap first and foul, you would imagine. They go to Walker, who gets it, who's trapped, now over to Tynes. They want, they want to get the backcourt trap, but I think they need a foul here soon. Tynes over to Walker, and now the foul with Sutton. Greyhounds took off 10 seconds of time there, working through the backcourt, and then got fouled for a one and one for Jarvis Walker. But Walker today, he's one for four from the line. And it's a one and one, Landon. Yeah, free throws haven't been, you know, very kind to him today, but 33 seconds, William Jewell down by eight, eight could be nine. I mean, unless if you're Reggie Miller, a comeback Listen, is going to be. Landon, don't say that. <laughs> we saw these same two teams do have the same as that game, and William Jewell almost completed the comeback at this in some the same, almost the same scenario. Walker, the free throw is short, Landon. Rebound, Patterson. Patterson. Taking a while here. Getting away three, Jermaine was strong. The rebound, Sean Craig in the tip in the air. Rebounded back to Jermaine. Another look from three-point land, and that one also no good. Once again, tipped out. Another look for Patterson. So straight away three. That one is no good. Rebound, Choa. <laughs> and that might just about do it. The Greyhounds are about to advance to the semifinals of the NCAA Midwest Regional taking down a team who took them out of the GLVC tournament just last week. And that's a standing ovation here for the UND faithful. Much deserved, a difficult game, intense game. They had a scoring drought of almost eight minutes and they still were able to recover from it and probably get the win here, Landon. And they'll play the winner of Ferris State and Northern Michigan. That game coming up next. And those two teams in the same conference, two GLIAC schools coming up next. So familiar foes, two games in a row, two GLBC schools and then two GLIAC schools. And now we'll see some players for the last time stepping out, namely Kobe McKinley, the graduate student for William Jewell, his last appearance in a William Jewell uniform. Both him and Shannon and Jordan Germain, I mean, it's like their careers have come to an end for the Cardinals. One chapter ends, another another chapter opens. But I mean, what a career it's been for these two gentlemen. As uh, the free throw was no good. Patterson door still cracked. Patterson a long three, no good. A rebound tipped up in the air and good off the bank. And a timeout's going to be called by head coach Chris McCabe. As the jewel bucket was good, six point ball game, but two point six, almost impossible for Jewel to come back. Landon, you would imagine at least, and they'll bring in some subs. Will William Jewel for the first time. Looks like to end this one out, but Landon, Greyhounds. I mean, this has been a full, this has been a full revenge tour for the Greyhounds. You know, if the Greyhounds lose and you get a rematch against them, and they will they will knock you on your butt. They will kick you in the teeth. I mean, and that's just you, that's just what you Indy does. That's just their nature. The Greyhounds on the cusp of advancing to tomorrow afternoon semifinal on their home floor. Some of these seniors may have thought that their last home game came on senior nights, but things fell their way in the region, and then they end up hosting for a second year in a row. And they'll face the winner of Ferris State and Northern Michigan. Both teams have not played before, so it'll be a new opponent this season. While the other two teams away on the other side are two familiar foes, Upper Iowa and Wesleyan, two teams they have played this season. So it looks like the region being start, starting to sort itself out. A seven, a six, and the number one seed are going to be your regional semifinalists, followed by a four or a five in Northern Michigan or Ferris State. Coming up next, so stay tuned for that. But first, got an inbound for the Greyhounds. Tynes will get to Bingham. They won't foul, and that will do it. Greyhounds win 71 65. And they advance. Survive and advance is the name of the game at this point in March, and their season will continue. On the road to Evansville, they're into the final 32 teams in the nation landed. And final and you, and you four in the region. And you hear the song, All I Do Is Win. I mean, that's, just, that's, something, that's what this UNI team does. Full exchange, hand six. These two teams, and I mean, honestly, full respect for both squads. Oh, yeah. I mean, four times play the season, they split two apiece. And I like, um, I like what I'm seeing here, head coach Chris McGabe. Hugs and handshakes from every single player. He's not These skipping one of them. These two teams might be rivals, he, but they have the, nothing but it, respect for each other. 
And that's something you love to see on a sportsmanship. Compared to like level. McKendry, maybe it was more of a rivalry there. But Ohio will give a hint to every single player and then talk it over with our reporter, Madison Mosley, as the Greyhounds survive in advance to Sunday afternoon. We'll be back on this floor tomorrow. We're talking over with head coach Paul Corsaro. Great game Simon. today, coach. I saw a good win at the Wow, how does that make you feel about the team? I'm really proud of these guys. I have a lot of respect for William Jewell. We've had four really tight games versus them, and uh, they're a really good team, and um, our guys did a great job today. Yeah, that's great, that's great. As you move forward to the next round, how will you prepare for the matchup against either Northern Michigan or Ferris State? I'm going to watch the next game, and I'll let you know maybe later. We haven't played them yet, so we have some work to do. We, we were focused on William Jewell. My assistants have been working ahead on these two teams. My focus has been on William Jewell. I'm sure they'll do a great job briefing me uh, after I address my team. Yeah, of course, of course. And Jarvis Walker finished with 23 points. How do you keep him playing at this level throughout the whole tournament? He's been pretty darn good, hasn't he? So I, 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 I think he'll be able to keep it going. That's good. Thank you so much, Coach. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Addison. Thank you, head coach Paul Corsaro. We'll see them tomorrow afternoon. Phenomenal basketball game. We still have one more to go, though. Northern Michigan, Ferris State. That one's coming up next, but three of the four teams have found their way to the semifinals. We still got one more to go, Landon. And me and you will be right back here in about 30 or so minutes. So make sure to stay tuned. You are watching the 2024 Division II Midwest Regional on NCAA.com. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 30. Touchdown. Michaela Burgess. The NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org slash opportunity. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours.